Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back for another Cash Tira deck profile deck update. I'm going to get right into the deck build here, starting with the mainline magic cards. One card destruction, one sacred sword of the seven stars, one terraforming, one called by, double triple T, double birth, double theosis, triple planet, triple dimensional fisher, and triple macro cosmos. I was a little wary of only running uh, two Theosis and two Birth. I know there was some comments in my last video um, really questioning the two Birth, but fortunately today it did work out very well. In my personal opinion, I definitely think the deck put out and performed very well without running out of resources. So that was really uh, good to uh, get this out in the field and get it tested today. In the main board for... Monster lineup, Triple Bell. This was definitely the MVP hand trap all across the board today. Um, in my round two, I played a... I'm sorry, it was round three. I played a branded Despia player, lost dice roll. They went for the puppet lock. And my sixth card drawing for turn was Bell. So it was like a Yugi moment. Pitched this and completely stopped the puppet lock, which was really quite incredible. Triple Ash. Triple Shifter. Triple Rise Heart, Triple Fenrir, Triple Unicorn, two Scareclaw. This has been just phenomenal. Sometimes you can side one out, just the same with one Rise Heart, but two has just been completely blowout, in my personal opinion. This card is really, really good. Do not sleep on the negation effect. You can summon this out with Theosis in defense, obviously, and you can still attack for it. It's the second biggest body to Ogre being the first, and the turning off effects on either player's turn is just incredible. Um, also, of course, you can proc off a potential Theosis combo and retrieve fodder from your um, remove from play zone. Ogre, I have a little bit of a questions about. Um, it hasn't been performing quite as well. Um, one thing that has kept it in, in my personal opinion, is because it makes the OTK, uh, potentially you can't always OTK, but if you're going to OTK, usually you need the Ogre to uh, to wrap it up in one turn. So being that's the highest attack, so that's kind of what's been the saving grace for that. That's all for the main decks, 40 cards as always. Extra deck, a little bit more synchro heavy, obviously I'm running Trip Ash, Trip Bell, so with the tuner, Bell and Ash being tuners alike, uh, six tuner targets. You know, obviously got to be very, very cautious because Rise Heart and Theosis will lock you into XYZs. But before you do that, you can go for your uh, level 10 plays. First being Ruddy Rose Dragon. I feel like this is a little a little less known uh, tech for Cash Tira. It's super, super good. When this comes on board, you can basically nuke both graveyards, completely remove from play everything. Um, it also is a really big body. It's 32, and usually if you have planet, it's even bigger. Um, that's the primary use it, reason why I use this. There isn't really much any other application. Um, it's really just for that late game. Going in and just blowing out both graveyards can be very, very impactful. It's not always utility, but in the grind game, it's pretty blowout. Of course, standard one Baron. And then the last synchro is Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chin Ying. This is super, super good. Obviously, my personal build, I use a lot of re um, removal cards. So um, potential spot removal on both players' turn. Plus, it gets an incredible boost. Also, uh, small details, you can start removing fodder from your graveyard as well if they, you know, they try to proc destruction effects on it. Uh, Little Knight, pretty standard. Um, obviously, this isn't a link deck by any means, but this is just too good not to use. Um, primarily just for backup. One Sky Crisis, one Zeus, one Draco Sack, one Dark Arm, uh, Dragon Annihilation. There was a few games where I missed the second one, but the the game that I was able to proc out one was actually against the branded player. Um, unfortunately, it did get super polyed on summon, so I wasn't able to kind of um, reap full benefits from this. But one has has been working out, which is you know, nor here than there. But one has been okay. Two Big Eye. Two Red Eyes Flare Metal. I can't get enough of this card. This card was so incredible. And um, it really took the cake in the top eight cut today. Um, there was just some very, very unfortunate circumstances and some crazy, crazy hands that led to me falling out of top eight today. However, this was such an incredible card today and um, probably one of the MVP uh, extra deck cards, in my personal opinion. And of course, Triple Shang.
I like three. I know some people like two, even one. I think one is just insane. Two is a little bit more reasonable. Um, I'm not running Prosperity in this build, as you guys saw. So, I mean, two would be a little bit more reasonable to continue to diversify the extra deck a little more beyond even the synchro plays. But, again, my personal white Mexican theory, this Unicorn Fenrir just continued to pump and surplus resources, forces your opponent to push out that Ash prematurely, forces your opponent to push out that Imperm prematurely, and if they don't, you're just going to continue to overwhelm them with a surplus of resources, especially from the deck, searching your magic cards or searching your cash tier of monsters. For the side deck, one preparations. This has been really, really lackluster, I'll be honest with you. I don't think there was a single game that I sided this in. In my personal opinion, I really only like using this as a guaranteed going first. If I know absolutely that I have the choice to pick first or second, I put this in going first because, you know, I can immediately use it on my opponent's turn, draw phase, activate this, potentially special summon some fodder from the banner zone or maybe even the hand. Um, again, these, these are kind of on the chopping blocks, honestly. Um, the only reason why I kept this is because I obviously main one Ogre. Um, you never want to see these together, especially if you're going first or if you're going second and you lose the dice roll. That's why I took this out of the main because there were just too many times that I was just bricking on both of these. Um, only opening, opening both of these or even just opening this and not the Ogre. Ideally, you want to open the Ogre so you can search search this. It doesn't really, really, really work out that way for me. It's primarily I'll either get the preparations and no Ogre or I'll get both of them. So I just got really, really tired of that really fast. So I ended up signing the preparations, but I just really have not been using this, which is kind of crazy because, again, I mean, three-dimensional Fisher, three Cosmos, three Shifter, so I have nine removal cards. But I'm not sure. I really feel like maybe I'm not really sure what I could replace this in as the 15th card on the side, but right now it just didn't really, it really has not been performing my last couple tournaments. So this, this is potentially on the chopping block more than likely. One rivalry, obviously, all your monsters are psychic besides Rise Heart, even Shangira is psychic, so you can still play under this. Most other decks cannot. One Harpy's Feather Duster, three Cosmic Cyclone, three Anti Spell. Uh, for the longest time, I was using Judgment and Mind Over Manor as far as uh, protection against Evenly Match, Harpy's Feather Duster, um, Lightning Storm, or uh, Evenly, uh, I think I already said Evenly Match. Um, really, really good stuff. Um, but you know, it, it just, it wasn't enough. Uh, I think personally, um, people for some reason, I guess because of snake eyes, they think that evenly matched, you know, there's a, there's a strong belief that evenly matched is garbage against snake eyes. Snake eyes is obviously the big target, this format being the top meta deck and, uh, amongst others. And, um, it personally, I think that that causes, uh, me to get hit more with lightning storm and harpy's feather duster in the past so that's why i did opt to do run the three of to stop the back row hate obviously this build is still extremely vulnerable to evenly matched luckily for me i did not get hit with a single evenly matched a single game all throughout all seven of the rounds um but overall i really like this lineup and it's been working out um pretty well in my personal opinion some things you just can't control unfortunately certain things happen but overall i think this is a really solid card for going second, of course, triple evenly match. I don't care what everyone says. I don't care if people don't think this is good against Snake Eyes. I love this card, and I'm not going to let anyone talk me out of this card ever again. Every time I'm going second and I see this card, it's always blowout. It's such an incredible card. Um, it's it's just one of the best going second cards. Board clear is just the same as Lava Golem. Lava Golem even more so. I ended up losing to top eight to a rad ra a raid raptor player, and this was would have been so incredible. Unfortunately, things just didn't go my way in game three. Um, but this I would never second get, never second guess a playset of lava golem and a playset of evenly matched. Like it's just me personally, but these six cards have always been phenomenal for my forced going seconds. That is all for the deck build. Really quick, I'm gonna go over the matchups. It was initially six rounds again to top eight. The total was 35 players today. Round one was against Trap Tricks. That was my um, my only uh, round loss in like the you know the prerequisites. The first six rounds. So round one was against Trap Tricks. Obviously, Trap Tricks is a little random. You don't really see it in the meta, but it's definitely a good little sleeper deck. Um, really hard matchup against Cash Tira. That's they really have a great advantage against Cash Tira. I believe I lost dice roll as well, game one, but. Two games flat out lost, a little bit grindier on the second game, but on overall uh, match loss round one against Trap Tricks, 
Round two is against Ubel. Please don't play Ubel. Ubel is straight up a makeshift wannabe Makanko deck. That deck is, it's not a bad deck. I just, I personally just cannot stand the play style of the deck. I think the deck is so obnoxious. I think the artwork is really, really cool. I think the Ubel history and all that is really cool. But the whole idea behind the deck, like, do not kid yourself. If you're playing Ubel, you are just making. You're just playing a makeshift Menkanko deck, and it's just really, really not fun. I don't see how it's fun to play. It's definitely not fun to play against. Um, I won that flat out um, quickly, rel relatively quickly. Two games, won the match. Round three was against the Branded Despia player. That was uh, two games. I won the first game, lost the second game, and we he, they took the second game right at the end of time. Uh, so that was, we just decided to draw instead of, you know, we have kind of like a gentleman's agreement where we either draw or roll dice kind of under the table, but we decided to take the draw. So that was my only draw for the event. Round four was against a Fire King Snake Eye variant. That was three games. I won the third game, took the match. Round four was against a, another U-Bell, uh, played two U-Bell players today. Uh, so round four was the second U-Bell, and that was, I lost the dice roll, but flat out, two games, that was a very, very quick victory. I think it was like less than 20 minutes. Um, I defeated my opponent in both the first two games, so that was, felt really good because I just utterly despised that deck, but um, nothing against the player, nothing against if you know you like U-Bell again, it's just, it's just a makeshift Mankanko deck. It's like Mankanko reincarnated. Round six was against a Horus Blue Eyes variant. Um, I did lose dice roll in that one, but I opened shifter game one and essentially he passed me and I just OTK'd him, took game one. Um, game two was a little bit more, it was kind of like this, the, the same thing. He kind of just like drew a little lackluster and I was able to just kind of like open pretty godly and it's essentially the same thing. Um, opened up Harpy's Foul Duster, cleared his back row, put all my bodies on the board and attacked for game essentially, you know, with Fenrir spot removal and all that. So that was two games flat out, one round six that put me after the first initial six rounds that put me at um, x1 with a draw so one round loss with a draw that got me enough points to get into top eight going into top eight i played against a rad Ra a Ra raid raptor player i believe i lost dice roll if i'm not mistaken that was three games and we went we had like maybe a few minutes left handful of minutes two or three minutes left going into game three um and unfortunately i it's just it's just the way it is you know you can't win them all he just had the cards that he needed when he got them. And the biggest thing is like Lava Golem was a saving grace for that deck. I just, I wasn't able to proc Lava Golem before he went into the big XYZ that basically blows up your field, hits you for damage. And then it gets like, I don't know if it's like boosted or something, the 4,001. And basically I just, in one turn, I just lost all my life points, unfortunately. So that didn't work out. Um, that was what dissolved me from top eight. So I don't know. I didn't stay long enough or I didn't check the board. I think I either got anywhere between, um, sixth place to eighth place. I'm not sure, but I ended up getting defeated in top eight after that. So overall, really, really great. I think it performed. It was a very f unfortunate ending there in top eight, but it is what it is. I'm grateful for the experience. Again, you know, you can't win them all. And um, unfortunately, it really was kind of like win it all, lose it all situation. Um, so uh, getting to top eight, I just got the five bones credit, which essentially just is going to cover the entry fee. And then, of, of course, we got an OTS 24. So really quick, I'm going to crack this open. If this is like a Chaos Angel or like a Harpy's Feather Duster, I think I would have walked away, you know, with the best. Um, it's actually a super, one of these unchained things. I've actually never pulled this one before, so that's kind of cool, something new. That is all I have for you guys tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been a showcasing by Autumn's Allure. My name is The White Mexican, and I'll see you in the next video.